when I decided to call the book Expulsions, I realized that what I really cared about is a particular element, which is the smallest part, probably, of a broader sort of scene, if you want, and, and that it had to do with the point when the language of inequality, which is, has become a dominant category to explain our current condition, but I repeat, a point when that language of inequality no longer works. Because the familiar condition, not the monster, you know, not the, but the familiar condition becomes so extreme that our existing statistical and conceptual or theoretical categories cannot capture it. So the image for me is a multiplication of these systemic edges within our national sovereign territory, so to say. This is a global condition, but it's global by recurring in country after country. And it's also global partly because critical global corporations, for instance, are replicating an operational mode in country after country. But it's not the global as in transcending the national. It's deeply buried inside the national. And so my systemic edge can, for instance, be the person who has been unemployed for 10 years. And in the case of the United States, we have more and more black men who, by the time they're in their early 30s, have never held a job. You can't just call that unemployment, nor can you capture it with the language of inequality. So I say they have been expelled. And they become invisible to our statistics, to our conceptual categories, and in their full materiality, we don't see them. But I also speak of land that has been so destroyed, so much toxic stuff, so much abuse of fertilizers and pesticides, that it's dead land. When land is dead, we don't count it anymore. It disappears. It doesn't show on our maps. So, you know, I, I go over a whole series of conditions. Again, familiar, but extreme form renders them invisible to us, no matter how material they are. I end the book realizing, and literally as I was writing the conclusion, I found myself confronting this question that was in my head that kept recurring. And it really was the question that, in a way, you know, you asked, um, which is, uh, what are the spaces of the expelled? And I argue at the end of the book that this, in fact, the interesting site for research. We know so much about the abuses of our democratic system by powerful corporations, the way they are destroying environments, etc. But we know very little, far too little, about the spaces where the expelled make a life. Greece has given us a close-by window. So we have seen families, middle-class families, so poor that for the good of their children, they leave their children in churches, in hospitals, they just, and then they disappear because they don't have the money to feed them. It's that bad. You would not have expected that in one of our European countries. So there is a lot of extreme misery. The small shopkeepers in Italy and in Greece, in the thousands, who have committed suicide because they cannot pay their bills anymore. You know? And so I think that my next project is going to look what are the diverse spaces of the expelled.